So, you know, um, for uh, more than 20 years now, I have worked um, a job in uh, a large corporation, a U.S.-based corporation, with everything that that implies, right? And sometimes it has been fantastic, and sometimes it's been um, like wading through um, emotional sewage, right? All of that is to be expected. And uh, recently, the last few years, since reading Ryan Holiday's book on uh, discipline, part of his big stoic series, I've had a role model in Epaminondas, who was a Greek general. And uh, his story as told by Ryan Holiday in his book. Um, it starts with him as a an enormously successful military general in like the 350s BC, so in the wars against Sparta, the Peloponnesian Wars. Very successful, brilliant general. And uh, in part because of that brilliance, he's considered a threat, political threat. And so he's exiled to Thebes, and in Thebes, he is given a minor office in charge of sewage. But instead of seeing this as a humiliation, he takes it as a um, an opportunity to be the best sewage manager in history. And so from this story, we get the, the idea that the, um, the office doesn't make the person, the person makes the office. Now, um, it's a great, that's a great story. And um, what I found when I was Googling around uh, was that the actual history, and I'm looking now at, general history sources like uh, I saw it on Britannica.com but also Wikipedia uh, nothing there references an actual exile or demeaning demotion uh, he certainly was put on trial by his political enemies and um, narrowly avoided execution but it seems like other than that the worst that happened was for a year he was not the I'm going to have to look, look this to make sure I say it right. The Boeotarch. Now, Boeotarch is uh, one of the rulers of the Boeotian Federation. It's like a chief magistrate. B-O-E-O-T-A-R-C-H. Boeotarch. Bo I guess it would be like if the city council here in Pittsburgh were called the Pittsburgh. I don't know, the Burgatark. There we go, the Burgatarks. Instead of a mayor, we had a Burgatark. Uh, and so for a year, he wasn't one of those and narrowly avoided getting executed. So I think what this is, is the difference between Plutarch, who is writing biographies with an intent, right? So the intent is to show how to approach demeaning situations with an inherent dignity and to transform those situations into uh, not just a, um, a neutral uh, or sort of non-offensive, but actually into a legitimate source of accomplishment, pride, dignity. Uh, the person making the office so Plutarch, I think, probably took that year of uh, not being the Boeotarch and narrowly avoiding execution and, and turned it into a story of Theban exile. It could be that some other source um, other than Plutarch actually lists out the Theban exile, and in which case this that I'm telling you now is a Plutarchian ode uh, to make a point which I think is what Plutarch generally tries to do, right? 
Um, so my job is not managing sewage, but I've certainly had things I have not enjoyed doing. And it's been a long time, right? It's been my out of life. I uh, dropped out of my PhD program 80% of the way through. I mean, I passed my comps. I had a first draft of the dissertation. Man, I wish someone had just taken me aside and said, don't be such a fucking idiot, finish it. But I didn't, right? And then I started working at the same company I'm at now, uh, stuffing envelopes, literally taking diskettes and putting them into an envelope and sending them out to clients who needed to upgrade software. And then over the course of the time, I learned a smattering of Visual Basic, and I uh, figured out I had a knack for project management. But I think in general, aside from the specifics of what I've done, um, you know, you assume that it's the, there's a long haul in this, and sometimes you're at the top of it, and things are going really well, and you're being recognized and compensated, and you like the people you work with. And then other times, one or more of those three important steps aren't there. Uh, and it's easy to rail against that and to feel like um, life has abandoned you somehow. So I, there, there's sort of three you know, turnings of the wheel that I've gone through. Um, it's actually been more than 20 years. It's actually been, I'd say I started in 96, so it's actually coming up on 25, nearly, th Jesus. Man, I'm old. Uh, so let's say it's 30 years. For the first 20 of those, um, I resented the fact that I had to work this corporate job and I considered myself a thwarted creative. Not a particularly healthy way to think about things. I resented, I certainly worked hard enough and I was promoted and rewarded, but I, at some part of me resented it. Um, that's through my 30s into my mid-40s. A real split between what I, who I thought I really was and what I was doing for a living. And at the time, that seemed like actually a healthy thing. In retrospect, it, the dichotomy isn't, isn't very helpful. But it felt healthy to be able to compartmentalize what I did during the workday and then what I did or didn't do as a creative writer. It's not like my production. It wasn't like I was spending my off time writing. Um, too bad, right? That's, that's not what I did. There was a dichotomy. Let's use maybe one through 20. Then 20 through, let's say, 27. <laughs> Again, these are broad, right? I haven't quite worked 30 years. But I want to get across the sense of spacing. Five to seven years where... Um, I recognized I could do both. Both were both were worthy endeavors. Different, but but worthy. If I was going to work, I should not resent it. I should apply myself to it, and um, and again, I saw my career flourish with with that. So it's still a split, but now the sense that. Um, equal amounts of energy. There are two pillars, right? My work and my work. That's kind of when I started doing this YouTube channel. I've been doing this YouTube channel a long time. I just haven't... I've, occasionally I will go a year without posting a video. Uh, but then in the last few years... Uh, what I've recognized is that I'm one person doing many, many different things. And the same, the same approach, no, right? Not, not that both are equally important, but my approach is the same. At work, in my YouTubing, in my, um, in my writing, these all demand a full engagement. And that's true whether I'm writing a piano piece 
or whether I am um, whether I am uh, in a meeting at work and maybe you know where this first I can remember where this first started I started doing a gratitude journal and I would find that in my journaling if I ever wrote things that suggested I was feeling put upon it wasn't being valued or recognized. If instead I turned deliberately, and this was with effort, this was not a natural, spontaneous arising of gratitude, but if I literally first rewrote the sentence so that whatever I felt put upon for became a statement of gratitude, and then applied effort to really change the way I thought. These things don't happen spontaneously. It's not like I just woke up and recognized that I was grateful for my job and that the uh, the engagement with job, with writing, is in some sense the same. Uh, this takes a real effort to change the way I thought. And the brain does respond to prompts, positive thinking prompts, it, uh, re really. And it's not delusion, it's not kidding myself. It's not wishful thinking. It is literally saying that um, there is no split within how I express myself in a meeting at work or in writing. Now, in both of those cases, I can be flawed. I can lose my temper. I can be disappointed in my work. I can be disappointed in my writing. I can be frustrated with my life, or I can be delighted, all of that. But that response is not based on my projection on what I think should be happening. I am not made by the position that I have. I make the position that I have. Uh, so I act... It, it's maybe it's a simple acting the job that you want, right? I act like I'm a much more interesting and involved person at work than I really am, right? I'm pretty junior. You know, for someone who's not junior, I'm relative. I'm really quite junior. And uh, But I act like it matters what I think. And so my brain changes and the brains of those around me change. It's important to me that what I think matters. That's not important for everybody, but it's one of the ways... You know, assuming that compensation is fair and that uh, the people I work with are decent and the work is interesting, it, it matters to me that I feel like when I think of something, my opinion is sought out and that it matters. Uh, I don't need everyone to do what I want, but I want to know that my, uh, in, my inspiration or my vision is at least considered. So anyway, uh, the story of a uh, of an exile sent to manage sewers, having been a brilliant Greek general, he's not an exact lineup, right? In my mind, in my fantasy, I'm a brilliant writer, and the reality is that I sit here and I have to update project plans and documents that um, don't interest me. But if I apply the central reality of my natural state, right? all of that stuff that we talk about with meditation, um, apply that broadly to the task at hand, whether that's on my laptop at work or whether it's my writing behind me. Uh, the plasticity of the situation is always surprising. Let me know if you have any questions or thoughts or um, whether you think I'm just full of new age bullshit with positive thinking denial. Let me know that too. Otherwise, keep your wits about you. <laughs>